Hello. All right. So, Dominic, Bitcoin appears to be very range bound, a little bit boring this week, uh, and Bitcoin dominance is going down. What's going on? Yeah, it's been a very uh, dull week for Bitcoin, but really exciting for altcoins. And typically you see that happen when there's a greater investor appetite for risk. So when Bitcoin uh, sort of stalled out and stabilized after the sell off earlier this year, there was a slight demand for Bitcoin relative to altcoins. But then once that rally picked up over the past month, altcoins really showed their outperformance. So you saw new highs in like Ethereum and Solana, um, just showing that investors have been rotating to where there is greater upside potential. Mm -hmm. So with these all time highs to Solana with the other altcoins, is this natural after a Bitcoin all time high or are altcoins, do you think, establishing themselves for their use cases? A little bit of both. You know, uh, the risk on hasn't really been there for cryptocurrencies for the most part of this year after the sell off that occurred in May. Um, or in March. So, you know, what happens now is that as investors start deploying more of their cash back into the market, they tend to go towards those higher beta or higher sensitive to risk assets. Those are the, the altcoins in the crypto market. Um, so they're benefiting from that. And then also, you know, a lot of the, the hype and excitement over, you know, the Facebook news that you mentioned earlier, um, DeFi activities and NFT. There's a lot of, um, of, of other use cases out there that folks are looking for. Um, and they're just adding that to their crypto portfolio to see future advantages. Mm -hmm. And anything, any impact from the Fed report this week? We saw that the Fed's latest policy decision was that they would begin tapering this month about 15 billion in in asset purchases per month. As they, but I mean, asset purchases are at 180 billion, so it, it has some time to deplete before yeah. it has an, an impact. But the reaction, perhaps, uh, may have uh, some sort of reaction from the markets. Yeah, it, it did. Um, so it, as soon as that release came out or the announcement from the FOMC, we saw a dip down about three to five percent. And then Bitcoin really held that 60 handle and came right back up. And I think a lot of that news has been priced in. You saw in the traditional market, short end of the rates have been really surging. And that shows that the market has been expecting the Fed to scale back its asset purchases. It's a long road, like you mentioned. Um, it doesn't mean that there's going to be a, a, a rate hike, right? It just means that they're slowing the rate of asset purchases. And those have been unprecedented from the pandemic. So there's been a lot of support for risk assets from that greater liquidity from the Fed. Um, now, the worry with that is that next year, you know, when they do start tapering and, and lower and, you know, tightening monetary policy, what happens is correlations start to rise. So you tend to see uh, sort of a, a flight to safety from risk assets, and that might be troubling. But for now, you know, quarter four remains strong for risk assets. So we're seeing that that heavy bid and the markets have sort of been um, adjusting to right now, you know, this, the slow rate of, uh, of tightening of policy. Mm -hmm. All right, let's turn to the health of the Bitcoin network. Um, but actually, first, let, let's we, we did also screen a bit of a teaser early uh, yesterday of the Navajo Nation, which are starting to build mining data centers of uh, Bitcoin data centers on their territory. And it's just pretty remarkable. They, they've faced generations of exploitation. They are, they've been abused financially by the U.S. government, and now they're starting to take or they're trying to take a step in the right direction for their own culture and community in trying to establish a bit of their own sovereignty with Bitcoin, their financial stability with Bitcoin in these mining facilities. So a pretty remarkable short film by our Compass Mining, a uh, Coindesk contributor colleague, Will Foxley there. Um, but expanding mining operations and acquisitions, Christy, it's, it's a theme uh, throughout the crypto industry, isn't it? 
It absolutely is. And because it is a, a theme that's running through the industry right now, we are seeing the hash rate for Bitcoin increasing. And the hash rate, if you recall from previous episodes and discussions, is the total combined computational power that is used to mine and process transactions on a proof of work blockchain like Bitcoin. And the higher the hash rate, the more secure the blockchain is. Now, Bitcoin is pretty darn secure. We saw that because there was a massive drop in hash rate in May when the miners in China started shutting down because of regulation uh, problems. And yet the, the mining industry thrived in spite of that. And now what we're seeing is that the hash rate is really recovering nicely at a very steady pace. The difficulty has adjusted upward for the eighth consecutive two week period on Sunday. And the difficulty adjustment is a pretty good measurement because the higher the hash rate, um, the, the easier it is uh, to mine Bitcoin or for Bitcoin to be mined because there's a lot of machines doing it. So they have to make it a little tougher in order for the blocks to be produced at a steady rate. We're now a little more than halfway back to the level seen in May, right before China started shutting everything down. Uh, the hash rate is 200, uh, it was 200 exahashes per second in May, dropped to 76, up to 169. So we're down you know, we went from 200 way down to 76, and we're all the way back up to 169, which is pretty darn good. And this week alone, we've had several uh, reports from miners, mostly North America, that have demonstrated that they are contributing to this growth. For example, Canadian Bitcoin miner Bitfarms ha uh, has plans to grow its mining capacity to more than two exahashes per second in November after hitting a record hash rate last month. Um, and it plans to achieve three exahashes of mining power per second by the end of the first quarter of 2022 and eight by the end of 2022. Uh, they are uh, constructing new mining facilities, production facilities in Sherbet, Quebec, that should be completed uh, in two phases through next year, adding 78 megawatts of total power. Argo blockchain has a hash rate of 1.075 exahashes per second, and it expects its previously contracted purchase of two of 20,000 bit, bit main miners to be delivered starting in the second quarter, which will bring the company's total hash rate capacity to 3.7. Then you've got Compass Mining, the folks behind the video at <laughs> setting up miners. Um, in the Navajo reservation. They uh, have just signed a new deal with Red Jar, Canadian Red Jar Digital, which will add 140 megawatts to their capacity, doubling it. Uh, Marathon has added to uh, 27,280 active miners. Um, they are now at 2.96 exahashes. Well, they now have that total of miners. Um, they're going to be adding more. Riot is adding more. Uh, it's just, it goes on and on. And all of these were just reports that came this week. So it's easy to see why the mining wow. hash rate is definitely on the rise. Yeah, the secure network on the rise is always good for the health of the network. And, and amid this growth, and <laughs> yeah, and profitable. And amid this profit, amid this growth, of course, uh, we have a lot of scams happening latest one dropping this morning with uh, a phony news release uh, from Kroger saying that they would begin accepting Bitcoin cash. Did we, did we see that impact the markets at all, Danik? Yeah, we saw initial spike up in Bitcoin cash and then it came right back down. Very similar and very similar tactics to the Walmart <laughs> release that was like a few weeks ago. Um, so, you know, a lot of these things occur when there is uh, froth in the market. Um, but you just got to, you know, do your due diligence and separate the rumors from the facts.